Rice for centuries is one of the most widely cultivated agricultural crops in the world, along with wheat and corn. Its wide growing range extends across continents from Central Asia, Southeast Asia, and America. Rice or Oryza sativa belongs to the grass family and can survive in both semi-dry and aquatic habitats in tropical and semi-temperate regions. Thus rice has become a very important staple food grain for the majority of the world's population for many centuries. Rice has transcended into the psyche of human civilization mainly as a food source, as a religious icon, and inspiration for the development of art and culture, especially among the communities whose lives follow the cycle of rice production. Rice as a commodity is high in demand as a staple food crop because of its versatility in processing and consumption. Rice could be cooked and eaten plainly after it has been milled or can be processed into a variety of food and beverage products. As a versatile crop, rice also demands intensive cultivation management, especially on its need for ample water supply, fertilization, and control of pests and diseases. From the traditional low input cultivation to an intensive high input cultivation, rice culture and production has dramatically changed in a short as a century. The pressure of the rapid increase in the world's population has contributed to the rapid evolution of rice production methods. The demand for rice to feed billions of an ever-increasing human population has pressured rice farmers and producers to resort to intensify production from just one to three cropping seasons annually. With the phenomenon of climate change in which weather and climatic patterns drastically changed in a worldwide scale, rice production was not spared by its impact. These factors had also worsened the occurrence of pests and diseases attacks in rice. Drastic increase in climatic temperatures and erratic wet and dry seasons in most tropical rice ecosystems made for the occurrence of pests and diseases attacks to more than double compared to the previous centuries. The increasing popularity of heavy chemical input in highly intensive production systems had also contributed to the problems of pest outbreaks and disease attacks due to pesticide resistance and the death of natural rice pest enemies that could have provided ecosystem services to reduce vulnerability to outbreaks. Between 2004 and 2009, Rice plant hoppers are among the outbreak pests of rice that has brought heavy losses in several Asian countries because it is also a virus disease carrier. Persistent plant hopper problems cost about 1 million tons of rice losses yearly in China, with 2.8 million tons in 2005 because of slightly elevated summer temperatures. In Vietnam, rice exports were halted because of 400,000 tons losses due to plant hopper outbreaks. In response to the rice crisis, the Asian Development Bank and the International Rice Research Institute in April 2008 initiated the Rice Plant Hopper Project under the 13th Regional Technical Assistance Program. The project was approved in October 2008 with a goal to develop sustainable means to reduce crop vulnerability to pre-harvest losses due to plant hopper outbreaks. One of the project's themes is ecology based on management strategies in which the project adopts the ecological engineering approach to pest management in rice. So what is ecological engineering in rice? Ecological engineering is the design of ecosystems in order to restore or build ecosystem services and resilience or crop health or system immunity into production systems. It has recently emerged as a paradigm for considering pest management approaches that are based on cultural practices 
and informed by ecological knowledge rather than on high technology approaches such as synthetic pesticides and genetically engineered crops. Various habitat manipulations and practices are integrated to favor natural biological control and functions. Ecological engineering methods were first tested through field trials at the International Rice Research Institute. Activities involve identifying key indicators for monitoring, evaluating, and quantifying ecosystem services, developing habitat manipulation strategies to maximize biological control, and developing practices to rationalize pesticide use. Other activities also involve monitoring changes in pests and ecosystem services through toxicological methods to monitor toxicological responses of plant hoppers to frequently used insecticides in a wide geographical area. At the International Rice Research Institute, rice plant hoppers are captured and reared in captivity and used for pesticide resistance, viral transmission, and varietal resistance experiments. Taxonomic and entomological studies of parasitoids and predators collected from different geographical areas are also ongoing. The formal launching of the Ecological Engineering for Rice project was held in Vietnam in September 2010. Around the production system. 
So in, 19, uh, in the year 2007, the FAO proposed that for sustainability and the future of agriculture, we need to find ways to provide subsidies for ecosystem services. In economic order, and sometimes in, in, eco in economics, it's called payment for environmental services. This initiative today here is one such example. In agriculture, most governments have pest control budgets. The purpose of the pest control budget is to ensure that farmers do not have abnormal losses from pests. And in many cases, most governments allocate most of this pest control budget to buy chemicals. We now know that those chemicals have negative effects and in fact bring about new pests. So this might call for a new order, a shift of such allocations from input subsidizing to, sub to subsidizing what we call public good. And it's also a pest control method. I am say, I say today is a very special day because I think the launching of this, act, this initiative it's, it's a new way for us to think about agriculture, to focus on the public good and not on the value added input. Such a shift is very important in sustainable, sustaining agriculture for the, for the rest of our lives, for the lives of our children, our great-grandchildren, and, and, and 200 years from now. With that, I welcome you to this very important event and I thank you for coming to join us in launching this uh, activity. Thank you very much. Vietnamese scientists, agriculturists and farmers had already conducted several farm trials with partner farmers in southern Vietnam, specifically in Mi Thu, Cai Lai and Cai Bi districts in Ten Yang province as well as in Chao Tan district in Anyang province with very rewarding results. So I think uh, last time we carried out to a uh, site uh, of the uh, ecological engineering for best management in the south of Vietnam. And after that I think a very good result. And the farmer uh, have a strong uh, linking with the uh, farmer neighbor and uh, strong between farmer and uh, scientist so that the farmer the ray pesticide application to control best and the farmer saves many money. I think that is a good uh, result we uh, carry out about the uh, ecological engineering and the farmer get the high benefits. One form of ecological engineering or ECO-N in rice production is habitat manipulation. It involved planting of host plants, preferably plant species with nectar-rich flowers that can attract a wide variety of friendly insects that are also natural enemies or parasitoids and predators of rice pests, especially the rice plant hopper. These host plants are cultured by propagating their seeds into seedlings that are then planted along the bonds of the rice fields to serve as a source of nectar and shelter for parasitoids and predators. Common species of flowering host plants planted along the buns belong to the family Compositae, Asteraceae, and Verbenaceae. However, other horticultural crops with good rattling recovery, like okra and sesame, had also been planted. Even other common endemic flowering weed species had been cultured and planted along the buns to serve as host plants. Maintaining the cleanliness of the buns need not be intensive for farmers since most of the host plants are mostly non-perennial species that will die once they mature after bearing flowers. Their seeds can be collected and grown as seedlings for the next cropping season or directly sown along the buns. Other host plant species can be trimmed short for ratonate. Host plants are planted ahead of time 
before the rice seedlings to have them established first for the natural enemies to reside. The concept is to increase the population of parasitoids and predators to counter the outbreak of insects like plant hoppers in the rice field. With this approach, the host plants and natural enemies provide the ecological services to reduce vulnerability of rice to pest attacks. Through ecological engineering, ecosystem services will be enhanced through increased habitat biodiversity, providing shelter, food resources, and corridors for natural enemies. Thus, the need to spray insecticides in the rice field is greatly reduced. With reduction in the use of pesticides in the field, the natural ecology of the system is recovered and restored. This is working well with the natural system to fight or manage the insect pests. This is also a step toward sustainable pest management in rice production. The ECO-N approach can also add extra income to farmers out of the produce that they can get out of the host plants such as vegetables, seeds and flowers and at the same time transforms the field not only as an agricultural site but as an aesthetically pleasing location for the community to enjoy especially when the host plant flowers are in full bloom. Echo N can encourage a macro and microcosmos to flourish. Some farmers in Vietnam had already witnessed the advantages and benefited from the concept of ecological engineering in rice production with good harvests. Partner farmers gave good comments like less insect pests in their field, reduce expenses on the use of fertilizers and pesticides, improve farmers' health and recommended to scale up the Echo N model. There was a threefold reduction in pesticide application and the yield of rice increased between 6 to 6 and 1 half tons per hectare. It was also observed that there was an increase in abundance of natural enemies in the field. Partner farmers were also trained on how to monitor their rice fields for both insect pests and predators. Light trapping method and blow vac method are some of the pest and predator monitoring and collection methods used. With the very promising results of the project, the International Rice Research Institute and the Asian Development Bank are aiming for a wider coverage of adoption, especially in major rice-producing areas around Asia and the world. The concept of availing the service of nature to curb environmental damage and to maintain a very sustainable environment is gradually picking up popularity among some farmers in Asia who had applied ecological engineering in their rice fields. It is a sustainable service that nature offers for free, and our good relationship with nature and our environment will determine the continued agricultural productivity and sustenance that we can get in the future.